So you want to make destructible walls in the Bulimic Game Engine? Well, you're in the right place. So these aren't amazing unreal walls you shoot at them, little bits come off and then you push. It's more like you shoot at ones and like this whole big piece of the wall comes down and it's like it is actually using an animation and the reason I'm doing this is Blender's not very good at handling many objects so I'm keeping everything in one object and I'm using animations to make it faster. So let's get into it and let's go. So I'm going to start off by turning this cube into our wall. So I'm going to go into our front view. And I'm going to scale this out on the X axis. Right. I'm going to come to the side view and I'm going to scale this in on the Y axis. So until all of that looks about like a wall. Alright. I'm going to apply the scale by Control A, apply scale. I'm going to move this up so it's sitting just on top of the grid. Right. So we want to have a hole in our wall, which our player will be able to blow up, or press some key and it will open, or trigger something, and it will just it will come, it will fall out, blow up, whatever. So I'm going to add a plane. I'm going to delete all the vertices. All right. While while I'm still in edit mode, I want to go hold down control and I want to click. As you can see, add the vertice. If I click again, it adds another vertice. Okay. And then connect it. So if I click again, it adds another one. I keep clicking and it adds a whole string of vertices. So let's say this is what our wall should look like. Alright. So that's going to be our hole. So we're going to come into side view and edit mode. And I'm going to bring this just in front of the wall. And I'm going to press F. And then I'm going to extrude this to the back. Make sure you had all the vertices selected. And don't worry about these ingons. Doesn't really matter. Alright. I'm going to recalculate. So we now have our, what our, basically our thing which is going to make the hole. Alright. So I'm going to grab this plane, a uh, cube, sorry, a wall, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a boolean, alright, and we want to select plane, and we'll leave this one on, um, we, we want to change this to difference, so that's going to create a hole right here, I'm going to duplicate this again, I'm going to change this to insect, and if I apply this, and I apply this, Right, and delete this cube in the middle. As you can see, I have my hole and I have my main thing. Right, so I'm going to grab this and I'm going to grab this and I'm going to go Control J and I'm going to join them. Alright, so now if I come to face mode and I hover over this face and I hit Control L, Control L, or sorry, just L. And it's going to select that whole face, right? So we're going to come over here into the object data panel, this little vertice kind of triangle. And we want to add shape keys because we want to do some animation to this. And I just found shape keys work the best for the scenario. So I'm going to add in this shape key, which is just the base, which is going to tell us what the mesh is normally. And then we're going to add in two more. So we're going to have key one and key two. So we're going to want the key one to be at a 45 degree angle, kind of out here. Maybe bring it down a bit. All right. So there's what we have. Maybe lift it up a little bit. I find actually if you lift it up to out there, I think it would look a bit better. All right. And we're going to come to key 2, and we're going to rotate this to full 90 degrees, and move this down to about here, alright? So now we have our, our wall lying on the floor. Now if you see, yeah, there are some issues, but if we were to change this to 0, and we were to, as you can see, it falls on the floor. 
But if we roll back here, as you can see, we've got some squishing issues. And that's why we have this one right here. So that's going to basically fix up all these squishing issues, as you'll see in a second. So I'm going to change these all back down to zero. I'm going to zoom in real close on this here until we can see the five. Frame zero, we want we want to set this to zero. And we want to set this to uh, on frame five. We want to set this to one, right? And on frame ten, we want to set this back to zero. So as you can see, we kind of have it coming out, and it comes back in. So right here, on key two, on frame five, we want to set this to zero. But on frame 10, we want to set this to 100%. If we go to first frame and play this, as you can see, we kind of have some it falling out. Uh, you could tweak, play around with it, and you could probably get a better result. But I find this is a this is a pretty decent result for what you want. So now that's all finished. We want to set this up for logic, so it works in the game engine. So they could trigger something or press a button and the wall's gonna fall down. Alright? So we're gonna change this from default to game logic. And we're gonna make sure we select our wall. And it's going we're gonna add in a keyboard. And I'm gonna use the base. Now you could use anything, a near sensor, or you could message or something. So if they collision with something over here, the wall would fall down or whatever. I'm just going to be using a keyboard right now. So what I want to do is add in a action. And since this is the only action here, we're going to select this. And it's going to be 10. All right. Now, if we connect this up, it's not connecting. Just con make sure it's selected and they'll connect up just like that. All right. If I press space, as you can see, it falls down. A bit easier to see in wireframe mode. Alright. Now you might think, oh good, we're done. First of all, we only want this to work once. Alright? So, the easiest way to do that is call it a boolean and we'll call this true. Um, and we'll change this to a, an integer we'll do for now. And we want to connect this up, and we want to connect our property up to this one. So I'm probably on each side, and we want to assign to property to true. We're just going to assign one, and if true is equal to one, is if true is not equal to one, then we'll do it. All right. So put space, it works, and it doesn't really do anything anymore. All right. So one last thing we want to do is. If I just change this to open in the game and turn on physics visualization, as you can see, it doesn't change the physics. So our player or whatever we want going through here is not going to be able to go through because, according to Linda, there is still something in the way. So the way that we fix that is we want to add in another property, and this is going to be an integer, and we're going to call this time. And we are going to come over here to the action and we're going to select time in the frame property. Right down here. Okay. And we're going to add come down here to a property. If true, if sorry, if time is equal to 10, because that's our frame limit. And edit. And then we want to uh, remesh and uh, turn off GFX and turn on physics. And don't worry about the mesh. This is just going to recalculate basically the, uh, the um, physics. So if I press space, as you can see, our mesh updates and falls on the ground. Um, works pretty good. And you could connect this up to a message sensor and have like an object here or something that you collision with and you can play a sound and 
do all fancy effects and have particles and stuff like that. And yeah, so. If you have any questions about this tutorial or ideas for upcoming tutorials, comment them down below and also subscribe because I'll come out with a new tutorial every single Friday. So have a great week. See you next week.